zone, once united with Piltover, has become a polluted undercity, defined by its unchecked industrial growth and rampant magic. The city's toxic atmosphere, known as the Zone Grey, veils the sun, while below ground, waste seeps into sewers, creating dangerous mixtures. Despite this, a thriving black market and innovations like chemtech and mechanical augmentations allow the people to survive in these harsh conditions. Hey there, lore lovers! Welcome back to Lion Drag, where we dive deep into the rich stories and hidden histories of your favorite universes. Today, we are exploring the fascinating lore of Zone, uncovering its mysteries and connecting the dots that make this world so captivating. So, let's jump right in. Over 3000 years ago, a port city was established in the region, eventually becoming part of the Shuriman Empire. Whether the city was named Ka Zone or Oshava Zone is unclear, but it eventually became Zone. During the Great Darkin War, the wind goddess Janna protected the city, and when the war ended, the Targonians hid a powerful Darkin artifact within its caverns. Janna did not stop from helping the city. Centuries later, Zone sought to create a sea passage by destroying part of the isthmus connecting Valoran to the southern continent using Chemtech bombs. The plan failed disastrously, causing earthquakes that sank parts of Zone and released toxic gas. Janna intervened, blowing away the gas and saving many lives, cementing her role as Zone's guardian deity. The sun gates were later constructed to regulate oceanic trade enriching zone but also paving the way for Piltover's rise as a separate city. Many years later we also find Urgot, once a national executioner and later a prisoner, who took control of the dredge, a chemtech prison mine. He ignited a riot that triggered an explosion, shaking zone and killing many. Those who survived, as always, were the strongest. Coming to the current time and what Arcane showed us, Zone is in a complicated situation. Its government corrupted by camp barons that only see their interests and are keeping the crowds poor in their benefit because of their cheap labor. But even in their state, leaders try to light a new way for their people, as we have seen Vender. Unfortunately, he failed to rise and change the people's lives, so he tried maintaining an uneasy truce between Piltover and Zone. His adopted children, Vi, Powder, Milo and Clagor, unknowingly reignited tensions after a heist in Piltover, stealing JC's experimental hex crystals. A shattered crystal triggered an explosion, alerting the authorities. Silco, a rival of Vender, seized the opportunity to betray him, bribing Warden Marcus to bring Vender to him. Vi attempted to take responsibility for their heist, but Vender intervened, sacrificing himself. Silco captured Vender and a rescue attempt by Vi, Clagor and Milo ended tragically when Powder's bomb, powered by a hex crystal, killed her friends and mortally wounded Vender. Betrayed and heartbroken, Powder joined Silco, taking the name Jinx, while Vi was captured by Marcus and imprisoned in Stillwater. Years later, Silco ruled Zone and Shimmer, a dangerous substance, spread throughout the Undercity. Jinx, now working under Silco, clashed with the Firelights, a gang opposing his rule. Meanwhile, Vi was released from prison by Caitlyn, a Piltover enforcer who sought her help in tracking down Silco. Their search led them into a deadly confrontation with Silco's forces, while Jinx experimented with a stolen Hextech gemstone, turning it into a weapon. After many struggles, Vi and Jinx reunited, but their bond was fragile. As tensions escalated between Piltover and Zone, the sisters found themselves on opposite sides, their fates intertwined with the future of both cities. Zone is a city of contrast, nestled between Piltover and this geography reflects its divided nature. While it shares a deep connection with Piltover, the stark differences between the two cities become apparent as one descends from the upper promenade level down into Zone's depth. The promenade, perched just below Piltover's lowest districts, is a lively zone where wealthier Zonites mingle with Piltovans seeking affordable goods and entertainment. Here, bustling markets and commercial halls flourish, with cosmopolitan crowds browsing a wide variety of shops. Boundary markets, the heart of this area, blend the cultures of both cities, offering a vibrant meeting ground for all classes. Below this, the entresol level reveals the true heart of Zone, where traders, entertainers and workers come together. It's a chaotic and diverse space, teeming with energy and life. From hidden alleyways, where those escaping the low find refuge to the high-tech parlors where Zonites inhale their bodies, the Antresol level is a hub of both commerce and survival. This is also the level where Victor, one of Zone's most infamous innovators, was born. His story a testament to the city's gritty pursuit of progress. 
As one ventures deeper into zone, the air grows heavier with pollution. The sump, at the very bottom, is where the city's industrial core thrives, powered by chemtech and other innovations that have a costly impact on the environment. This area, dark and polluted, is home to the city's poorest residents. Yet, even in this grim setting, there are iconic landmarks like Old Hungry, a towering clock that serves as a reminder of zone's resilience. Factories and sewers define the landscape, with places like Prix's Industries casting long shadows of corruption and exploitation over the city. Beneath it all lies the ancient ruins of Oshra Vazon, a hidden relic of the city's past buried deep under the modern infrastructure. Explorers often risk their lives to uncover its secrets, navigating mazes of old passageways in search of forgotten treasures. Enjoying the journey so far, lore lovers? If you are as fascinated by these stories as I am, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps me grow and brings even more epic lore to the community. In the arcane universe, Zone presents a reimagined version of the city, compared to its traditional depiction in the main canon. Notably, the sun gates are absent, and the formation of the Undercity differs, with no indication that Zone was once a Shuriman settlement. In this version, Zone occupies a smaller space, limited to the southern area of Piltover, unlike the larger space under the sun gates in the canon. Its urban structure is tighter, with narrower fissures and a more condensed cityscape. The Camp Baron Tower stands as the tallest structure, replacing the College of Techmetergy found in the original lore. The promenade Andresol and Samp levels are also absent, and the zone is now divided into lanes representing fissures with smaller elevators replacing the iconic rising howl, public hexdraulic descender. Several key locations define Zone's undercity life in Arcane. The brothel, owned by the Yordal Babette, serves a wide variety of patrons with distinct needs. The Camp Baron Tower is the central hub for Zone's powerful Camp Barons, with Silco using its penthouse as a lush cultivar for plants. The Firelight Hideout, hidden within a vast abandoned sewer, is a unique refuge. Bathed in sunlight from a large opening, the hideout features a massive tree at its center, symbolizing hope for a better future. The surrounding walls are adorned with graffiti and murals, including a memorial for Zone's last children's, painting with the faces of characters like Vi, Powder, Milo and Vader. The last drop, once a subdued bar under Vendor's ownership, evolved into a lively gathering spot during Silco's reign, reflecting the vibrant yet dangerous life of the Undercity. Zone is home to resilient wildlife, including creatures like cliff shrikes, plague rats and viridian beetles. Its streets are alive, from gutter rats to bioluminescent firelight that thrive in its sewers. The world of Arcane offers a unique glimpse into Zone, portraying it as a place of grit, survival and ever-present danger, where every street and structure tells a tale of both struggle and defiance. Zone's governance is dominated by powerful individuals known as Ken Barons. These ruthless figures, each with their own sphere of influence, vie for control over the Undercity, running various illicit industries and criminal enterprises. During Silco's reign, the Camp Barons thrived, each pursuing personal ambitions while keeping a fragile alliance under his rule. Camp Barons like Cross, who operate the Hush Company, maintaining networks of informants, overseeing much of Zone's illicit activities. Corina Veraza, an ambitious and meticulous Camp Baroness, dreams of transforming Zone into a city envied by both Piltover and her fellow barons, while others, like Finn, have met violent end in their quest for power. Renata Glask stands out for her calculated manipulation, building her empire on her parents' alchemical research and becoming Zone's wealthiest crime lord. The world of Zone's criminal underworld is varied, with camp punks, gangs and camp thugs serving the interests of these barons. Groups like the Firelight, led by Echo, resist the Shimmer trade, while other factions, such as the Sons of Ur, follow a brutal ideology that reveres strength above all. Zone's many organizations, from the Academy of Techmetergy to the Sam Scrappers, reflect the city's industrial backbone, where every scrap of toxic waste is repurposed and even the lowest inhabitants are drawn into the sprawling web of corruption that defines life in Zone. Zone maintains complex relationships with neighboring regions, shaped by both alliances and rivalries. During the Naxian invasion of Ionia, Zonet chemists such as Singed were pivotal in developing devastating chemical weapons that left lasting scars on both the land and its spiritual fabric. Backed by Naxus, these atrocities created deep animosity between Zone and Ionia. In contrast, Zone enjoys a more cooperative relationship. The Empire has used Zonite mercenaries, including Singed, to further its military ambitions, with Zone acting as a source of terrifying biological warfare. 
The rivalry between Zone and Piltover is driven by their shared pursuit of Hextech advancement. Though connected historically and culturally, these two city-states are constantly competing to shape the future of Techmatergy. Smuggling operations from Zone often target Piltover's technologies, fueling a black market that spans all of Runeterra. Despite this, the cities remain intertwined, with Piltover's prosperity resting on the foundations of the Undercity below. That's a wrap for today's deep dive lore lovers, if you enjoyed this exploration make sure to like, share and subscribe. And hey, if you want to continue the discussion join our discord, we've got a community of lore enthusiasts just waiting to chat about theories and new discoveries. Until next time, keep loving the lore.